This episode contains spoilers for Telltale's Game of Thrones and the HBO series it's based on. Hello and welcome back to the Push the Smart Water Cooler. This week we are going to be looking at episode 4 of Telltale Games Game of Thrones. Sons of Winter, like most Telltale games, pick off right where we left off in the previous episode, which included some important things happening that I can't quite recall. I I was just going to say the same thing. Like, I feel like a lot happens, but when it's done, I don't remember. Yeah. (laughs) It's just a blur of sandy-haired, bearded men and... Brown-haired ladies. Yeah. (laughs) And Tuttle (laughs) on the wall. I will say, Tuttle makes me irrationally angry every time he's on screen. It's just like, ugh. I know. You again. I'm pretty sure, like, he was, like, the first character of the episode. He was. (laughs) Oh, God, it was so annoying. (laughs) One of the things that I did like about this episode is that he didn't really have that much time. Compared to last one, yeah. I mean, the time we had with him was awful, and it was the weakest part of what I thought was otherwise a, probably one of the more solid episodes. Mm-hmm. But he's in his, like, band of buffoons. I just, <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. Like, the first few choices in the game with Tuttle are, did you do it or did you not do it? I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. No. Yeah, and that's exactly. Just a response. That's not a compelling choice, which a lot of games can get away with masking those meaningless dialogue options as choices when there's more compelling stuff going on. But if the point of your game is a narrative adventure based on your choices, <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> I know. I was like, no matter what I choose, Finn's going to be here and be like, I hate this guy. Yeah. Which he wasn't. For me, he was. Oh, Finn came to my defense. He was like, he murdered him in cold blood. I hate well, this Well, that's guy. interesting. I never made up with Finn in the last episode. Oh, well, I, I was commander shepherding it and trying to play it cool with everybody. And he came to my defense, but nobody believed him. It was one of the, another yet another one of those. It wasn't his fault. No. <laughs> and then you go up to Jon Snow and he's like, I'm so disappointed in I you. Know! Uh. It was like, I, my uh, the only option I could choose was like I'm sorry I disappointed you. It's like no, you're not. This I know. Like... I I did like later in the episode once you've escaped from the Night's Watch. There is that choice where you can say like the Night's Watch betrayed me, which I totally chose. Yeah. I was like I pledged myself to them, and these motherfuckers were gonna kill me, which. I was trying really hard <laughs> to get myself executed to see if that was a possibility. <laughs> when Cotter comes to try and save you, I wanted to be like, no, I should stay here and fulfill my fulfill duty. my sentence. <laughs> that I, I did that crossed my mind too when I was being thrown in prison. I'm like, maybe this will be like Ethan. Yeah. And he'll die. But this is the one time you can't be like <sighs> Honorable Tuttle. Yeah. No, it's just like, get me the hell out of here. Yeah. Just make sure you grab the onions on the way out. I know. He was like, we already have food. It's like, onions, really? <laughs> it's like yeah. a, a garnish. And crab apples? Yeah. Oh, God. And then I, I hated, this is getting ahead, but when uh, you got back with them and they all escaped together because the bros, and they were arguing, and it was right back to the same thing from the first episode. It's like, so we have learned nothing, basically. <laughs> you know, let's just keep talking about Tuttle and get it out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was a little different because yeah. once he escapes, mm-hmm. uh, Cotter's like, if we run into Finn, he's going to call on us. And I was like, and then they both pick up swords and I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's kill him. I don't care anymore. Yeah. That was kind of my mantra throughout the game. I was like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. So I was like, I mean, later in the Wildlings, I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to kill y'all. I don't care. See, that made me, okay. First of all, a question. Did Finn come with you even though he tattled on you? He didn't. He, we didn't even see him, which was weird. Oh, well, he's with me. We're bros that argue and don't learn anything. You're the odd trio. I know. <laughs> it's like, aren't they funny the way they don't get... No. <laughs> there is nothing humorous about this. No. And then Tuttle catch up to some wildlings. And then Cotter's just like, just just let me talk to them. Yeah. Don't do anything. It'll be fine. And then he gets stabbed in the fucking chest. Mm-hmm. What, did that play out different for you because you had Finn? No. Because oh. Finn's an aggressive dude. We end up fighting all the wildlings. Which I hated. You stabbed that one through. It's like you have disarmed her. There is literally no reason. She pulled another knife out. 
She does in the game over state because at first I missed, mm. but it's like, come on, guys. There should be more <laughs> options. Like, there's literally no compelling choices on the the Tuttle track. There's nothing. <sighs> then we end up going to a camp, and then his sister shows up, and I'm like, oh, that must be his sister. And then, yeah, big revelation. She's my sister. There was a lot of that in this episode where <laughs> it's like, big reveal, something you figured out in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Which some of them I think I was willing to go along with more than others. That one I was kind of okay with because I liked her. I liked her design mm-hmm. and I was excited to see where that goes for once. <laughs> Jumping ahead, uh, Beska. Her, like, you know within 10 minutes, oh, she used to be a slave. Yeah. <laughs> That's her secret. Like, why else would you? Yeah. <laughs> I did appreciate the way you were able to react in that that big reveal scene. And given the nature of the show, I was pleasantly surprised that her secret was she fought in the pits and not that she was prostituted out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Last episode, I mentioned that I just didn't really care for Asher because mm-hmm. I didn't feel like he developed much as a character. Yeah. But I think this was my favorite. He had an like, actual arc this time. I know. And I actually really liked it. I think yeah. there, was, there was very little I'd change about it. The only things I did not like was I thought all the sections with Danny were ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and out of character and very plotty. I felt like they were kind of out of character, but not as out of character as Marjorie being like, I hate you. You're not putting in me in my wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. Jumping way ahead. Did you let her kill her former master? Absolutely. Me too. And it looks like from the preview that that counts as not letting the people choose for themselves, which fuck you. She's the people. One thing that I actually do really like about this is that in the episode, she's, like, such this white savior character. Yeah. Among, and, like, this and Beska sea calls of her on it. kind of faceless brown people that she mm-hmm. saves. And, you know, in this, we actually got to see something from mm-hmm. one of the slaves' perspectives. And it was very much like, in the preview, I was so pissed off because she was like... You didn't let them do justice. And I was like, yeah, okay, so the slaves <laughs> only get justice when you're the one who freed them? Is yeah. that what this is? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, and I, that's the thing I'm worried about. Like, I like the the perspective that Basca gave in this episode, but I'm worried it's, that's going to be retroactively moralized to go along with the show. I'm worried that we won't be able to, to combat what she's saying. And we'll either have to either deny the whole thing mm-hmm. with, like, a lie in brackets or we have to own up like, sorry, we messed up. Like, no, we didn't. Yeah. I really liked when you were going to make sure that the beacon wouldn't get lit. Yeah. I thought that was a really cool and effective action scene in yes. the Telltale way. I just thought it was really well executed. It, even though yeah. I knew that at some point things were going to go wrong because it has to. Mm-hmm. I, I was still kind of like really compelled. Yeah, it felt a lot less shoehorned in than a lot of the action sequences in Telltale games tend to be. It Mm -hmm. felt a little bit more like the best ones in The Wolf Among Us. I will say, there were so many moments where they just stop and smile at each other. It was like, no, you can't do that on Game of Thrones. One of you is going to die. I know, I kept expecting (laughs) like somebody to just put a sword through Beska when they were like, ha ha, we rock. And then, and then I like that they kind of played with that later because all of a sudden they were like, oh my god, Croft. And he's just like, yeah, whatever. I I'm got fine. this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, overall pretty good mm-hmm. in that regard. So next on the list is Mira, who is still at King's Landing and trying to unpack the conspiracy against her family now that she has taken care of any incriminating evidence linking her to Tyrion. Tom makes a little bit of an appearance suggesting that he's doing some errands for her, or at least eavesdropping. So like the main part with Mira is you have to sneak into the coronation party. Again, I think this worked a lot more because it was more defining Mira and her relationships with the people around her instead of just doing task A, task B, okay, switch. Specifically her relationship with her fellow handmaiden, Sarah. Yeah, I really liked that. Yeah, which I had to replay it because I felt so bad I made a choice at the end I regretted. So what did you do while exploring the coronation party? First, I eavesdropped on some people that were just by some wine, Mm -hmm. and they were talking about the dead guard, and I was like, oh shit. I like that bit of world building. I wish she reacted more to it, like had some kind of animation to go with it, instead of just sitting there. (laughs) Yeah, but she kept her composure, you know, that's good. And then I went to eavesdrop on the guy whose name starts with an A. That looks exactly like the Lord of the White Halls, and I just figured out they were different people. Yeah, just a larger (laughs) white hill character model guy and then it was like oh what a surprise he's the one who's in his pocket i did yeah. like that there's 
like this third <laughs> this, cousin. There's always like a bumbling Lannister cousin whenever they need to. Yeah, throw exactly. One in. <laughs> but then you get the information: the Lannister third cousin, twice removed or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> is addicted to milk of the poppy. What happened after you got that information? I went a very roundabout way. So like, I had Mira notice his injury and talk about how that was really hard for him. And she can't imagine what he's been through. And he kind of <laughs> let slip that like, oh, you know, he's been holding it over my head. So she's like, don't, well, don't let him hold it, hold it over your head. And he marches up to the other guy and like yells at him. <laughs> Ren was like, I know you're addicted because he told <laughs> you <laughs> he's betraying your trust. Oh. Go yell at him. And then they get into this big old fight. Then probably my favorite moment. Yeah. Mira and him get into like an argument and you can end the conversation by being like i will destroy you <laughs> and it was like my favorite thing and i was oh like yes God. i'm going to do it i'm going to destroy <laughs> you iron from ice <laughs> mira has my favorite facial expressions in the game they're very reminiscent of clementines from the walking dead yeah and she kind of does that when when she suggests oh you know what are you afraid of she like lifts that one eyebrow like that's what i thought i know <sighs> here's my favorite yeah i just want more of her but the bulk of the episode was probably roderick it was so it starts off your betrothed elena mm -hmm. who is going to die or betray you or both at some point yeah yeah comes up with her super hot brother <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, who's this who's this brother of yours? Aren't you going to introduce him? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, they forced my father to betroth me to the White Hill, mm -hmm. but here's this army of badass archers. I, yeah. That was like, what killed me. It's like, why didn't you bring those earlier? Yeah, I know. There was just a lot of weird pacing issues with his side where it was like, and I wasn't always sure what the consequences of my actions would be or how they were like going into the main plot. Like we we're marching on to take down Griff and there's the mother comes running out, you know, he's attacking the maester. And I was like, okay, let's go stop him. And then Elena pulls Roderick aside and she's like, you remember what you said? And I was like, You're going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, this is in line with what you said. I don't understand. Why are you threatening me right now? I know. Did I do something wrong, game? <laughs> <laughs> it was and, a very uh, odd character switch. Yeah, and then I, I, I presume that this is the way it goes for everybody. I didn't kill him. Yeah, neither did I. So it's like, does that mean I betrayed her? I don't know. I don't understand. Like, w what's... G which is a bad thing for a game to do. Yeah. And it's not misunderstanding in, like, a way that's narratively compelling. It's literally, I want to do this. I don't understand what what my character is doing. <laughs> I just don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> and so you bust in on them. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? Did the move Roylan taught me. And then when he was, like, sputtering, uh, threatening us, it was like, you really shouldn't do that. And then he, there's that great quick time event where you see him, like, raising the cage slowly. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. And he brings it down. And the soldiers just all come in. And the first time I played, I had him yell, like, you know, shoot anyone that moves. Mm -hmm. And it was immediately, it was this really badass moment where, like, one of the guards starts to run away. And the brother just kind of, like, immediately turns around and shoots him. Yeah. Second time, I was just like, get their weapons. Um, and I, did you punch him? Yes. At okay. first, I got the Meister out of the <laughs> circle. And then I beat the shit out of him. <laughs> And I kept hitting him, and I think I gouged out his eye. Oh my god. Yeah. I didn't, because I didn't feel like that was becoming of a ruler to do that. I am the bigger man here. I'm just going to throw you in the dungeon and starve you. I am so over being the bigger man <laughs> in this game. That's why Mira's going to destroy that guy. Tabo's going to kill anybody. And I'm just going to poke out your eyeball with my stick. Mira's going to have the Iron Throne by the time sure. you're done. <laughs> She's going to win. <laughs> It's the last thing I do. <laughs> oh, this is a weird part, too, because it was like, we're killing all the ravens. A message just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and then we killed it. <laughs> you get invited to High Point or whatever it's called, and you go in there, and it's very kind of like Red Wedding-y. Yeah. And the sister kind of tries to talk you down, mm -hmm. and he wants to basically make you slaves. And Yeah. And you see that really silly, like, family portrait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which the pregnant like... mother yeah. of White Hill is always a White Hill. Yeah. Uh, and then they come in and they try to, like, negotiate this thing yeah. where you're handling all the production so that 
it's not shitty quality anymore. Mm-hmm. And he just becomes an indignant little shit like he always does. Mm-hmm. Pretty much there are three different ways that you can tell him that you have Griff, but I didn't want yeah. to. I just stayed silent. Oh. And then Royland was like, and we've got Griff! And I was like, damn it! <laughs> Be cool, Royland! Be cool! <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then everything escalates. And I actually, I got the game over twice. Me too! I did the, like, can I kill him now? I'm like, yeah. And Royland, you know, throws an axe, which is awesome. Into his head. Yeah! <laughs> But then everybody dies Red Wedding style. But I thought I saw a quick time event. So I was like, I got to redo it and get the quick time event. <laughs> There's no quick time event. You just die. <laughs> I know. I was actually really excited when that happened. Because I was like, yeah. finally, my actions have consequences. <laughs> but then it was just game just over. Game and over. I was like, yeah. well, of course. Yeah, which is like, if you have this many characters and the show has the reputation that it does. Like, killing off Ethan early did nothing. Killing off Roderick now, that would do something. I know. Especially because I left Talia as Lord. <laughs> Me too! Later for my actual, I bluffed. Yeah, I called his bluff too. And then I was like, kind of okay with how things were going. And then the very end. Ugh! You go there, all there's nobody to be seen, arrows have been fired off, and you go into the hall, and Ramsey motherfucking Bolton is there. I, that's a, as soon as I heard just, like, the jovial voice, I couldn't even make out what it was. I was like, it's Ramsey, isn't it? God damn. Like, f- I have to wonder, with what is going on with the show right now, if Telltale knew about it, or if they didn't, and they're watching the reaction to the show, going, oh shit, or if they're, <laughs> like, on board with everything Ramsey is doing. Because they are writing Ramsey as a car- a bad cartoon villain. No, absolutely. And the show also was kind of doing that now. I, I kept expecting some, like, cartoonish laugh. <laughs> when laugh or something. Dun, dun, dun! Cut to black. And I think the thing that this episode did so well is that it mm-hmm. kept away from a lot of the show characters. Yeah. Which gave you a chance to really dive into the characters mm-hmm. and feel like you're actions had consequences because they didn't affect canon characters but Mm -hmm. now going into here i'm like well he can't die i can't kill him so i'm fucked i I don't know what i'm gonna do yeah i had that reaction it was like it was going so well and it was just like god damn it yeah (laughs) it felt very much like hey kids remember this is game of thrones as seen on hbo (laughs) (laughs) every sunday's at 10 (laughs) i noticed in the next time on game of thrones crc had come to mira for incriminating evidence about Tyrion. I punched which, the air. I was yeah, so excited that I called Which was it. definitely something. Yeah. Okay, choices. Let me pull up my choices. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So, me and 8.4% did not encounter Finn. <laughs> <laughs> and then me and 62.5% maimed Griff. I and 85.3% kept Sarah's secret from Lord Tarwick. Oh, wow. It's gone down. Yesterday it was 86.3% interesting and then me and 69 percent ordered the glenmore soldiers to remain at iron wrath which pisses me yeah, off yeah it did absolutely freaking nothing well that's the thing it's like it didn't make any sense there weren't Mm-mm. any white hill soldiers there weren't any mm-hmm. of elena's archers there weren't it's even literally just people ramsey yeah i hated that it. <laughs> it's actually gone up though 71 percent have ordered the soldiers to remain and saw and jokes on us shit payoff and then when I played, it was 21.9% Ooh, who allowed up. Beska to kill the slave master. 254 have now allowed them Oh, wow, to that's her a come. pretty big bump overnight. Yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah. Don't listen to Daenerys. What does she know? Last episode, we asked who your favorite playable character was. Leaders mentioned that she found Asher's parts a little therapeutic just because he actually A, gets shit done, and B, is roguishly charming. And after this episode, I agree. Me too. I liked his parts in this episode after feeling like he was kind of dead weight for a while. Codename Eagle points out that while Mira is their favorite, they aren't liking how everybody's kind of forced onto the same path, kind of same Mm. direction, which I could see that. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm starting to feel like. It's okay if Tuttle dies because we still have all these different avenues. Yeah, exactly. It's like too many things end in a game over state Mm -hmm. or just have the let's do this. No. 
So it's like live a little tall tale. So Reverie Nightingale, shout out to Roderick in his scenario. Because even though he is, quote, getting pushed around a lot of his parts and most of the original, the Mira and Tuttle parts I thought were a little bit too influenced by the canon characters, which I can see. R Roderick definitely feels very... Minus Ramsey. Feels a little <laughs> bit isolated from what's going on. So this week, we want to know, do you like the appearance by the TV show characters, or do you think that they weigh the game down? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of our latest episodes and water cooler discussions. Well, it's been a time and a half, but a lot of torturing to do.